Welcome to The Big Break Show, a podcast where we discuss short-term rentals, entrepreneurship, life, mindset, and everything in between. Here are your hosts, Rafaloza and Jesse Vasquez. What's up, everybody? I'm finally back, and I found the man that was lost, Mr. Jesse Vasquez. Here he is. What's up, buddy? How are you? I was going to wear my Where's Waldo shirt with these glasses because I kind of look like, <laughs> I, I actually kind of look like Waldo, dude, like just like the Hispanic version of Waldo, <laughs> right? <laughs> the old Hispanic version of Waldo. The old Hispanic version of Waldo, exactly, with with long hair. And Daryl, if you're if you're watching this right now, please put up a picture of Waldo so people can get reference of it. <laughs> that would be great. People don't know what Waldo book, is. Man. They're going to be like, what, what's this guy talking about? Who's Waldo? I missed that book. You know, I, so it's funny that you say that. Actually, I had a conversation with somebody um, and they didn't know who Waldo was and they didn't know who the little magician and Waldo was either. Are you serious? You know, the guy, you know, the guy with the big beard and the little, the little yeah, stick? Yeah, the wizard. Yeah, the wizard. I was like, dude, we're fucking old. <laughs> you know what? I can't believe Waldo's still not a thing. Like, I, I still play with my son. We we still have a book. We have books, man. We go through that all the time. Like, it's fun to me. They should have made a movie about him being lost and like a group of people finding him. That would have been a great, a great... <laughs> I know. Speaking of Waldo right now, we could, we're going to be talking about being lost and being found and potentially what are actually the quarter, what this quarter looks like, Rafa, the Q1 of uh, 2023. Um, we're kind of turning yeah. a recessionary period and what the Airbnb numbers look like. And Rafa's been operating in what? SoCal. Um, and I'm over in NorCal. So we're going to give perspective today on our Q1 plans, what they were before. Maybe we could talk about what they are now going into Q2, Rafa. But what's your thoughts on that, man? Yeah, you know, I, I'm glad that that we, we're having this recording uh, for people to kind of know where we're at right now. Obviously, this isn't an evergreen episode because it's only going to apply to where we're at today, but at least it'll give, give some people a little bit of perspective going into quarter two and what to expect the rest of the year. Obviously, guys, this is all our opinion, what we see, how we look at things. And it's very heavy, heavily based on short-term rentals and Jesse's mid-term rental stuff, right? I just had a, a conversation with somebody last week out in LA about this, where they see the market go. And, and it's kind of crazy with short-term rentals. I, I mean, so many people got into it when the post-COVID era happened, right? Where everybody was just traveling like crazy. And now the Airbnb bubbles amongst us ready to pop and people are starting to hurt. And it did really well and it did really bad for a few of us. Like, for example, for you, Jesse, right? And I've noticed it. It did awesome for the midterm rental market. Yeah. Like it blew up the midterm rental market. So many struggling hosts can't figure out how to get their place booked. So they decided to jump ship to the midterm rentals, right? And so on the good side of it is that it brought light to your expertise, the midterm rental stuff. And it yeah. brought light the fact that it's not all about short-term rentals and it's not all about long-term rentals. There's an extra strategy in there called midterm rentals. Yeah. On the backside of it, the downside is that those people who weren't prepared for it, who had no idea, the new hosts that got into short-term rentals really hurt and really struggled. I mean, dude, just this morning, I got a message from somebody who follows me on Instagram saying, hey, uh, they sent me photos of their listing. And I'm like, what's this? Like, you know, do you need help with it? What are you trying to do? And they're like, I'm selling it or closing it down, whatever at this point. I don't care if you know anybody. And I'm like, oh, gosh, you know, it's one of those again. And I felt really bad for them because they've been operating for a long time. Um, but it was probably just one simple mistake. And and what is it that I always tell everybody, Jesse? You know, it's make sure you hold at least three months of reserves to be able to overcome that hump. And no. um, so going into the topic here, you know, I'm not ashamed to say it, but I have two businesses, right, within short-term rentals. One yeah. of them performed okay and one of them lost hard, right? It was like a negative like $8,000 for the month. And that one was 26 units out of my 70-something units. And it hurt. It was one unit or a collection of units? No, it was a collection of 26 units within this one one company. So I have multiple entities that hold a certain amount of units. Right. And this one lost a, a certain amount of money. It was, it was a couple grand, but it's never happened before, ever. In the six years I've been doing this, I've never lost money in one month for short-term rentals. And so that tells me something. It tells me that we're going into a different era, number one. Number two, this Airbnb busting is real. Number three... As a host, I got to start paying a little bit closer attention to where I want to take the direction of my units. And number four, I, I got to keep up with the market trends, hence why I'm so excited about this episode. Because so to give you guys a little background, I could easily transition to midterm. You already know 40% of my units are probably 38, 39% of my units are midterm rentals. Yeah. Right. And so the rest is all short term rentals. I don't go after the contracts like you do, Jesse. Right. Everybody knows that because I, I'm just lazy and I don't want to do the work <laughs> because I'm, I happen to be in a very good market. But now it's even this very good market is being affected. Right. The problem and, and I'll, I'll cut it here, Jesse, so you can give me your thoughts on it. But the problem that with these units, 
eight of them happen to be loft style units. And um, actually, it's 12 of them happen to be loft style units. And nobody likes to stay in lofts because it's very uncomfortable loft style because you have to climb up a rebar ladder to get to these units. Therefore, it doesn't make sense either midterm or long term for people to stay in it. So it only attracts the younger crowd, not to mention the location where it's at. It's very, very um, trendy. There's bars downstairs. There's music going on all day. So it's not a very comfortable place for business people to be at. It's not a very comfortable place. It's definitely not comfortable for medical professionals because they sleep during the day. And during the day, they got music playing downstairs. There's restaurants. There's a bar. I mean, you literally walk down the stairs and there's a bar there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I'm struggling with that one because in the downshift, the, the the down season, I couldn't get get it filled for the life of me. Now I, I broke about even a little bit. Caught some of them lost a couple couple hundred bucks here and there, but overall it, it lost money. And so now I'm left with the decision of do I do I shut down these units? Now, mind you guys, I made a ton of money on these units over the last two years, right? Like a ridiculous amount. So to me, it doesn't really hurt. But the, what's going to hurt is the cost of me having to move these units and shut them down. So I'm stuck in this like spot where I see a lot of other hosts are being stuck in right now where they're like, hey, what do I do? Do I hold through and continue to push and hope that, that the up season, which is the summer season coming up, and I can see it up, uplift and maybe make my money back and continue to save? Or do I cut my losses now and move out? Um, I don't know. So, you know, for me personally, I happen to not touch any of the money there. So I, I happen to have money saved to get me through the bad months as always, right, as any smart business person should. But I'm right. at the point where, like, maybe these units aren't worth the squeeze anymore. And going into it, if I do want to even to transition to midterm rental, right, Jesse? Yeah. It doesn't really seem like something that I could do. And anyway, so I'm going on a rant here, but I'll stop it there because I want to hear your thoughts on what you, you've been doing and, and what you thought of everything I just said to begin with. <clears throat> yeah. So, okay. I know there's seasonality to stuff. Have you been able to go back and look at, like, 2019 like your booking lead time do you mm-hmm. do you catalog any of that stuff at all all of it so I'm, I'm glad you actually said that really quick let me touch on that because i i actually compared this year to last year and going into march last year i was already 67 percent booked and uh right now i'm at 17 percent booked 17 and so that that's a huge now that this is only for these units that i'm telling you guys about right it's not the entire those are business. my favorite units you have by the way dude literally yeah, i love those things they're awesome they're awesome. But it's just, this is what I'm saying. Like it's, it sucks because it's in a, you know, obviously we love them, right? They're yeah. trendy. They're the cool spot to go, but yeah, n- not, not to mention too, though, Jesse, on top of it in my specific market. Now everybody knows I'm in Santa Ana. I hate talking yeah. about it because it brought so many people to Santa Ana, <laughs> yeah. but because of that reason now, guys, if you're listening to this and you're like an avid follower, do not come to Santa Ana, not because I'm here, but because y'all saturating the shit out of the market. Now, uh, dude, I mean, look, and, and it's all honesty. Not, not, I don't care if you guys come here. I, I share info for, for me to help so that people can do better and get better and, and grow. And if you come to my corner, come to my corner. I don't care. There's plenty to share. But now we just had a conversation about this with an actual Airbnb rep and one of the hosts that I took over a building with. Shout out to him, by the way. We looked at the data and year over year, month over month, bookings in Santa Ana are down 9%. So we're losing 9% bookings every month, year over year, right? Wow. But in the last 60 days, 50, 59, and this was a month ago. So imagine how many more have popped up and since 59 short-term rentals popped up in 60 days. So now 59. it's not only going to be a 9% decline, it's going to be way more than that because now there's 60 new units. So the demand is not meeting the supply, right? It's just not. There's oversupply for the demand coming into this town. And so now I'm now there's true data, even with my units that are seeing that hurt, right? Again, last year, 67% occupancy to 17% occupancy from last year to this year, right? Yeah. It is, it's a huge dip. Now, I don't have data going back because I started I started these units, uh, what, two years ago? Mm-hmm. So it, it, there's no data going back even further, but that, that, that kind of gives you an idea of where we're at, right? Yeah, no, that makes sense. So, okay, so I have thoughts on this. And this is something that I've been talking about for a long time. And it's something that I've really been implementing, not just in my Airbnbs, but in general. So hospitality. I talk about it all the time. Like, I think there's something right now, Rafa, where, and we've been talking about this for a while, like there's professional operators and there's the single one-off people who just want to make money. Like, I get what you're saying where Airbnb bus is real. I'll talk about my stuff here in a minute. I mean, there's a lot of people saying it's not real, but where, what's happening is that there's a lot of shitty Airbnbs out there and they're they're not going to book. They're not going to be booked. Like, they're really not. So I'm actually surprised to hear that the lofts that you have that are literally my favorite, and it's probably because of, I just really like that Santa Ana building, the marketplace. Mm-hmm. I like the way it is. 
yeah, again, I'm in, I'm in central California. We don't have anything like that here. You got to go to the Bay area for that. So for me, it's just kind of a cool appeal, but there's, there's, there's a power in giving people more than they expect. And when I'm, when I'm saying this, I'm saying this in like, what if you rebranded those properties specifically? And you're just like, how do we make these a five-star experience? And how do I rebrand what these properties are for these people? Yeah. Um, so I think that's where I'm at right now with anybody that's listening to this right now, like take a step back, look at your units and Rafa's units are freaking cool. Like the dude's got like murals. Like he's done, like, this is one of the things that I hate about Airbnb right now. And I'm going to be super honest about it. And people that are listening to this are probably going to hate on me for it. Like all that themed crap is super annoying to me. <laughs> like everybody's trying to out theme each other. Yeah. That's so dumb. And they're losing the, the, the actual goal of like hospitality. A theme is cool. Like, don't get me wrong. Like I, I, I I'll stay at a themed property. But at the end of the day, it's like everybody's out theming each other. It's like, how cactus can you get? Uh, I'm going to get more cactus than you are. Uh, how, you know, how much color can I put in unit? I'm going to put more color in my unit than you. So like yeah. everybody's out doing each other on these like themes in it, and, and they're missing the point of hospitality. And that's where I'm talking to you right now about this is like, what if you rebrand and you just become like, dude, you got the, you have all the restaurants downstairs. Like what if you're able to like provide services that are outside of what a normal Airbnb host is? You know, local Santa Ana beer. You got that brewing company right around the corner from you at one of the units I stayed at. Like sponsor with them, get that ecotourism stuff going and like truly be one of the places that is like somebody walks in. And I think you do this already. You have like local art up in your in your stuff. I'm not sure if you're selling it, um, but thinking about like actually creating a business in your other business. And I know you got a lot of shit going on, but this also, for me thinking about this right now, Rafa, you're getting into the hospitality world, like the true hospitality industry, which I know we're in hospitality, but Hotels are a totally different type of hospitality. There's expectations that are needing to be met. And I think that that same mindset needs to go into units. So yeah. um, I don't know, man. I think there's a lot of ways to no, do it. No, you're 100% correct, right? I, I actually, it's funny we're having this conversation. I just had this conversation with two of my buddies the other day because he has one unit in another building that I'm at and the dude's crushing five stars across the board. I'm like a 4.65, right? Yeah. And um, Which isn't bad, just, by the way. You got 75 units. I, I, I don't, you guys all know I don't care about the reviews because I provide a great <laughs> service. So like, you know, 4.7, 4.8 is my average. In this building, we get complaints all the time because of the neighborhood, the alleyway, people are upset, blah, blah, blah. It's this constant thing. It, you know, things that are out of our control. But my, my buddy, he's crushing it in this building. Five stars across the board. Um, his only unit, I helped him get it set up and started. And he's outperforming all of us, right, in this 130 unit building. And it's because what you just said, it's the hospitality factor. They leave a bunch of stuff behind. Um, they care about birthdays. They care about special events. Um, they provide water bottles, peanuts, snacks, all this fun stuff. And they address issues on the spot. He's one of the rare single owner um, Airbnbs that do well from a new host. And that's I'd like to take a lot of responsibility for that because I, I'm the one that kind of got him started on it. So I'm, I'm kind of proud of that. <laughs> But I'm proud of him because he's crushing it. And so Crazy. for me, it becomes difficult because when you have so many units in one spot at scale, it's difficult to provide that home field touch unless you put certain people in place for a certain amount of units to be able to manage. I can't give hospitality to 70 units, right? 50 units in this market. I can't give that hospitality touch to 50 units because it becomes difficult, not only in terms of the guest communication thing, but also as far as the yeah, personal touch thing, right? Now I could certainly do it, but it's going to number one, take a shit, excuse my language, a lot of time. And it's going to cost me a lot of more money because I'm doing this at a bigger scale. It's not just one or two units. Now for the lofts, I did a rebrand in one of them to test it out. We provided an entire new experience, right? We, we redesigned the whole thing. We added these gigantic uh, 75 inch TVs. Um, we added night lights and like cool LEDs and like brand new couches, but we didn't do the personalized touch with actually the beer thing that you said is a great idea because I've been, I've been planning to do it from that brewery down the street to just start leaving beers there for them. Yeah, do it, him. The reason why I never did that was because I don't want to promote people having parties in my places. And if you leave that stuff, then they're like, oh, well, you know, I kind of think we were a lot of rage here. But then I think about it and it's like the entire building is a short term rental. Who am I disturbing? My guest next door. Right. And so that could be a, a good thing or a bad thing. I've gotten some really upset guests in that building because people next door have done it. But, but, you know, 
I guess in my my uh, my sense, you know, going into the hotels now, we we got the the difference with the hotels is that we got to provide a different style of hospitality in terms of the short term rentals. And you're 100 percent correct. We should 100 percent implement it to the our short term rental apartments. You know, there's no excuse for it. I, I just haven't gave it the time, maybe. And I haven't I haven't done it. And the personal touch is just difficult for me because I can't be around to do it as much. You know, I yeah. have too many units I have to deal with a couple of them. All right. I got to stop you right there. You're saying I can't. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I can. I just got to be able to do it. I got to sit okay. down and actually be like, all right. Okay. So that that's where I wanted to go with that. Rafa, you can. First off, I want to take this back real quick. I, I wrote a bunch of notes about hospitality. That's been something I've really been diving into a lot lately. Like, I really, truly care about it. People never forget how you made them feel. How many times have you checked into a hotel before in your life and you were like upgraded for whatever reason? Like you came in and you're just like, hey, Rafa Loza, how are you doing? Whatever, yada, yada, you're checking into Hilton Hotel. And they're like, oh, we have a complimentary upgrade today. Do you want that? Like you are, you're now, you're now, your expectation was to get a room, a basic room. And now you're upgraded to this other room. In fact, like if I was you guys in your hotel, I would tell every single guest that <laughs> that comes in the door. It's like, hey, you've actually been upgraded to another level. Because it's all of a sudden the shift in the mentality that I'm getting more than I've, than, than what I was typically going to get. So like something as small as that, dude, just shifts the way, you know, the way that uh, people feel. And I think they're like, the power of a genuine welcome is super, super, it's like meeting for the person for the first time, shaking their hand. You know, how somebody can tell if they like somebody within the first three seconds of interaction with them. Well, imagine yourself checking into an Airbnb, same concept, same conversation, except it's not you in person, it's your brand. And I think that that's where a lot of times people like will lose that touch. And and this is why I'm, I, I'm actually really glad that we're having this conversation right now, because everybody listening to this can take a step back and get a bird's eye view and, and really think about like, what is your brand? Like, what is your brand? What, what do you have that's different than everybody else's? What are you providing that somebody else isn't? Because we're in the game now of who's going to up each other with the murals on the wall? Who's going to up each other with the themes? Rafa can have the best murals and I can have a, you know, a somewhat standard home, but then they're going to walk in and they're going to have a genuine welcome. They're going to have a feeling that they're upgraded. You know, they're going to get these different expectations. And I think that that's where, dude, I think that's where, you know, like hospitality is going. I think that a lot of people have forgotten about that. And I really feel that there's a lot of like going back to the basics and, you know, having these conversations right now, like anybody out there that has a short term or even a midterm rental, like think about those things, because that's truly what's going to separate you, not the murals on the wall. And yeah, yeah, you do have to have a nice place, but it's, it goes back to service, man. And that that's where like we're on Airbnb, like 6.0 now, right? But the, we've already been through all these different phases of Airbnb. We see where it's going. We see where it's heading. Airbnb bus is real. I just heard like Tony Robin, uh, Tony Robinson talking about like, I'm glad there's an Airbnb bus right now. He said, you know, and I'm, I, I, I agree. I, I totally agree, dude, because, because this is going to have a, have a step back and truly look at what's, what's important to the guests. And maybe it's not a freaking mural on the wall. A hundred percent. It's going to come down to customer service. And, and what you're saying is all those, those bad hosts that, that haven't been able to keep up with that trend are the ones that are going to be hurting. Yeah. And they're not even bad hosts. I, I think that's the thing is, yeah, they just. They just don't know anybody and everybody, everybody operating right now, you included in this. Now this is you like stepping back. Like I got 17%, you know, my units have dropped on my Airbnbs have dropped too. And it's like, that's what made me step back and be like, how can I be better? I might be spending a little bit more money, but am I going to receive more on the back end? Am I going to give, get more five stars? Am I going to get more quality? Um, am, am my units going to be better? Am I providing a, a special touch? Um, you can go on, um, on Google right now and type in cards. Like you can literally get a, like a welcome card. And they will automatically sign your name. It's almost like it looks like an ink pen. And you can order yeah. like 500 of those, you know, for 50 bucks. And all your cleaner is going to do is put in the name of the person that's on there. If if they're going to be, you know, if you have that option of, of you know, being booked ahead. Yeah, man. Uh, I think it goes back to serving, serve like serve what you want to receive. Like, what do you expect when you're going somewhere? Like, do that for your guests. And I think we forget that a lot of times as operators. I agree. 100%. I think you're right. I think the next step for... For this industry is just who stands out in terms of hospitality. I've been telling people a long time, it's you got to really stand out above the competition. But I never talked about the hospitality side of things. Um, it was more of who's standing out above the, the neighbor, right? The neighboring unit. Who's got the better looking place? And I think nowadays it really does go down to who's got the better service. Who's, who are people willing to spend money on? And that's going to go down to your reviews. It's going to go down to what people are saying about you, the service that you're providing, the way you made them feel, it's everything you literally just said, 100%. You know, it's it's, it's funny because I have a, I had a, a meeting 
last week with my operations manager and I was like, Hey, um, how can we stand out? And they're like, well, everything we need to do requires mining. I said, there's gotta be ways to stand out without having to spend cash. Right. And, um, we never had a follow up meeting after that because we're supposed to have it this Friday to see where we go. But I think you've made very valid points, man. I think, you know, it's worth trying out. I'm definitely going to implement some of that and try it out and see if I, I see a change in it. Uh, to me, I always look at it as, is it worth the squeeze, right? Is the juice worth the squeeze? So depending on how much I'm going to put into it, I need to be able to track it to see how much I'm actually going to get out of it. For example, this unit rebrand that we did, um, we put in about another four or five grand into it for updating and doing everything new to it. You know, nice color, paint, beautiful design. It's actually nicer than my mural one now. And we spent more money into it and it, it turned around for, I don't know, maybe about a month and then it plummeted, right? It went yeah. right back down. And that one has 4.9 across the board. And so I'm like, well, that, that made me be like, well, is it really worth what we're doing to it? I don't know, right? Is it worth it? Who knows? Yeah. And so I think if we got to really do it, we got to really track those metrics to see what it actually does. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I agree with you. And this is where this industry is, is um, it's cold. Like I've talked about it before. It's very numbers oriented. And I think that's where hospitality is like, you got numbers orientation and you have a hospitality on the other end. Like there's a way to marry those two things together. And like, for me, it's like, how do we treat everybody like a VIP? Like, how do we make everybody feel that? Uh, and you don't have to spend a bunch of money to do it. It's just, you know, it's, it's simple little things that um, are super important. Um, so I think that it's one of those things where it, I think it could be daunting to do. And you're like a, the king of SOPs. So like, I feel like when you're like, I can't do that. I'm just like, dude, if you're one person to do anything, like you're the guy that's like going to be able to do that. You know what I mean? You know what it is too? I think I just feel like I have so much going on with the hotels and everything else that I don't want to put the time into it. But I think you're hundred percent correct. Yeah. And not only that, but it's like, now that you have the hotels, like, and this is just me thinking about this, like your mind is going to be more hospitality based. Like, yeah. you know, it's, I think it that that's, that's what's going to separate. And Hotels have always been that, dude. That's why, I mean, if you guys read um, The Willingness to Serve by Bill Marriott, the guy that literally has friggin' a billion uh, Marriott's, he wrote this book in the 80s, and he talked about, like, the willingness to serve people and how it's so important and how that's that that's how Marriott became Marriott is because they did things that no other hotel was doing, like, literally. And I talked about this before. There was folks that were going into, he, he opened a place in Europe, and there was a lot of business travelers that were flying from New York to Europe, and he actually had the newspaper flown into Europe so that the second those people woke up in the six in the 1960s what did everybody do in the morning had their coffee and they had their newspaper right so he got American coffee in his coffee bar and he got the newspaper so that people could wake up and literally get the news from yesterday in That's another crazy. so yeah and you're talking about expenses right now but you go back to think about like the willingness to serve people like how intuitive was that guy to think like that dude like and then literally like have the the New York Times put newspapers, bundle them up, put them in a plane, then fly them to Europe. And then his team was then going to grabbing them and throwing them on every doorstep of the the American travelers that were there. Um, so, dude, it's just like, you know, these questionnaires and using apps like Typeform before you have a guest coming in and truly knowing who they are and what they want to like, what they're what they feel is important to them. Like that's stuff to think about, like, you know, creating a creating a sense of purpose for that guest. Um, are you using a Typeform now for your guest? Yeah, so we use Typeform. So Typeform, you guys, you can you can go um, typeform.com. And what it does is you can create your own, what is it, Rafa? Like almost like an itinerary. You can create like anybody that has a survey done. Those it's are what they're usually done survey, on Typeform. It's a questionnaire that you can ask people certain questions. I mean. Yeah, you know, so it would be like, what's your favorite right. food? What's your favorite, uh, you know, what newspapers do you read? What local, what, what's your favorite co coffee? Uh, what type of beer do you like? And then you get that Typeform done. And then now I go formulate or your VAs go in and formulate, okay, Rafa likes uh, IPAs. His favorite uh, whiskey is whatever. Here's the top five restaurants that we feel based off of our our connection are going to work for you. Um, you know, they say that they like, you know, their favorite band is, I don't know, I'm just giving you an example, SZA or something. Just so you know, SZA is in concert at the Oracle Center next week. You might be coming for that. Um, you know, something like that. Just so they're like, oh, crap, I didn't know that. Or there's a potential for that. Um, or just some kind of like where you're actually, these people feel like you're listening to them. Right. Because people want to be seen, heard, loved and viewed. Right. That's like what everybody yeah. wants. Um, and that isn't that's that's hospitality, dude. That's like hospitality is not a transaction. And I think that's where, you know, we get caught up in this like the numbers need to work thing. But hospitality is not that, bro. It's like the opposite of that. And I think that's where um, how, do, how do you get to that? How do you how do you marry 
the transactional part in hospitality. Like, you know, I, uh, I read something yesterday and it's, it was like, your true worth is determined by how much more you give in value than you get in payment. That's literally what you just said. So the worth of what your short term rental will be, will be determined on how much value you're actually giving instead of the money you're receiving. So if you over deliver, you know, you over deliver, you over provide, it's going to pan out at some point. Yeah. Right. Especially in the hospitality industry. Right. Yeah, totally. You know, I 100 percent agree with you, man. It's funny. This conversation went in a completely different direction than what we had in mind. <laughs> talking about uh, hospitality, but no, I, I think you're hundred percent correct. I think that's how, how people will stand out in, in today's industry, right? Most people are like, man, I don't know what to do. Uh, I'm losing my shit. You know, yeah. I'm not making any money. I need to close down. And you just gave literally all the answers that people can take and implement like today. I mean, I'm going to have a meeting with my VAs right now and start implementing a lot of those things that the, I never thought about doing a, a job form though. That's a great idea. Yeah, job form. That's another one. People can go to jobform.com. Yeah, and all, and all you're doing is putting a questionnaire together. It's not like this super yeah. rocket science. It's just like, hey, in, in our when everybody books in our, our Airbnbs, it's it's going to say, um, you know, hey, we want a quick survey to say, you know, to give you the best restaurants in this market. Here, it's going to literally take you 45 seconds to fill out. Here it is, like if you don't mind sending it out. And I'd probably say that out of 10 guests that we have, probably six or seven fill it out. So you got 70. percent That's pretty damn good. Send it through a text message or how you send this. It's on the, it's on our, as they book, the second that they book, it's an automated message. So it'll automatically send out to them at the very bottom. Like, we appreciate you. Thank you for booking. We look forward to staying. Um, you know, but August. But when you receive it, how do you know what unit they're staying in? Because it has their name and all their stuff in there. So our, our VA is just going in, looking at the name, looking at the reservation number. That's oh, one they of the things. Their, they fill out their name also, all that info? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. So whoever books the property, like their information is going to be there. So all I have to do is yeah, just yeah. go back and look I at the. maybe it was automated. Yeah. No, I wish, I wish it was. But here's the difficult part, dude, is like once you do this one time, you have to reduplicate this every single time. Like, and this is where people get lost and they get stuck with anything they're doing. Like there's no consistency. Raindrops make oceans. Like if you keep doing something over and over and over, it's going to accumulate. It's going to be your standard at a certain point. So I think that's super important for people to think about. Like, if you're getting in this space and you're going to do this, like truly do it. Don't just do it once or twice, like rebrand what it is you're doing and even go in and change the wordage, you know, verbiage on your units ch change the way things are um use chat gpt if you're not the best at using you know putting words together for certain properties i actually just made a youtube video i'm releasing on how to use chat gpt for your your listing yeah man there's yeah and there's there's a bunch of different ways to do that maybe we'll have to record a uh and we're, we're really diving into um you know using those kinds of things for you know making our systems better or you know re, re uh, revitalizing or restoring um you know, properties they weren't doing as well. So yeah, dude, I mean, I think this conversation is, is, you know, it's important for people to think about in their businesses. Um, and I, I see you right now, dude, I'm looking at you and you're just like, I can see your head just like, all right, I'm kind of getting this. I'm getting it. You know, everything you're saying, like, you know, we talk about this all the time. I know about it. I just never implement it. You know how I get sometimes. So it's like, uh, until somebody slaps me in the face and goes, yo, get your shit together. It's when I'm literally <laughs> like, all right, dude, all right, it's fine. It's time. It's not even about getting your shit together. So I, I know. And so it's funny, everything you're saying, like, it's funny how things just fall into place at the right time when you need them the most. Right. I listened to this book yesterday. I listened to a podcast yesterday talking about all of this, literally everything we're talking about. And then today you tell me again, it's like the universe is telling me something because just even that alone, it's like, look, I, I don't do things because I do them for myself anymore. I do them because I have to do them for other people. Right. I have a team now. I have people that depend on me. So I can't just be like, okay, yeah, my lobster are not doing good. Let's shut them down. Peace. You're all fired. No, my people depend on me and I got to make sure that this shit stays afloat. And so I know what I got to do and I know what I got to apply. I just got to figure out a way to do it at scale. And that's the difficult part. But then again, that's why I'm also the leader and in charge of this business, right? To solve those problems and figure it out. So doing it at scale is the hard part. Can I give you three things to scale right now? Yeah, drop it on me. What do you got? Dude, you live in a mecca of... of People that are starting businesses, that culture's there in Santa Ana. When I went there, I saw it. It's like it's like a it's been revitalized. It's like a entrepreneur's little haven. And especially in the craft brew side, go to those local breweries and be like, "Hey, dude, I got fucking forty units here. Are you guys able to give me a discount or whatever or a QR code so we can display your stuff in our? We want to attract more more guests to your your pro, you know to your to your venue. And even go in there. The same conversations we're having right now, Rafa. Sit down with the business owner, the uh, the operations man manager of that building, and say, "Hey, have you noticed a decline in your sales?" Like, what if there's a way that I can actually uh, help you guys get more sales? We have X amount of guests that come into our properties weekly, monthly, and we want to provide services to your company. We want you guys to get better services. We're part of the community. We want to help our community. I'm a big person on ecotourism. 
dude, they're probably going to start handing you cases, bro. They're going to probably start doing that. Again, if it's a business that has like an intuitive mindset, solve some of their problems. We're going to be able to help you get your reservations up or whatever. Yeah. Put it in those terms. You know what I mean? Again, at the end of the day, people need to have, um, they need to feel that that you're helping them in a certain way. And, they, and you are. And you're obviously helping yourself too by getting the beer and you're helping your guests by like, hey, here's a cool beer that, you know, Santa Ana Brewing Company has and it's just right around the corner. And dude, yeah. And there were that whiskey place that I went to in Santa Ana. Another really cool place. You know, stuff like that, man. It's like where you're keeping people local and you're helping the businesses locally and you're able to go in there and say, hey, here's what our Airbnb numbers have looked like. A lot of our guests are r around the age of 22 to 30. Like this place would be perfect for them. Like you're actually giving statistical data of what their what your guests are. What does your typical client look like? And if that company doesn't know, then dude, they need to figure that out. Like they need to know what their avatar is, right? So um, I think it's just a good way to like reciprocate business and you're talking to another business owner they have the same mindset that you do dude it's just like thinking very intentional and we forget that a lot of times especially you you have a hundred things going on um but it all scales back to like being intentional yeah i agree with you 100 percent. those are great points i think i think uh it's funny you have my wheel spin spinning there's a bunch of stuff going through my head right now about this <laughs> but yeah man i i think that those are great ideas so those are great points and that, uh honestly not only should I, but everybody else should be applying to, to our business. Yeah. Yeah. Not only that too, but like, you know, one of the things with hospitality and, and I've, I've caught myself doing this rough and you might have too. We'll have guests that will like the, I just had a guest today. Melanie just reached out to me and she's like, Hey, the guest is wanting to leave. They said the kitchen is not uh, clean enough. And there was stuff in the fridge and yada, yada, yada. I know my cleaners are there. I know who was there. I know how good of a job they do. And I was always, I came to the point where I was um, in my mind, kind of like arguing with guests. Like, no, oh, that's not how yeah, it was. I do that all the time. But being right is irrelevant in hospitality. Like it doesn't matter, dude, if you're right or they're right or wrong. Like at the end of the day, we got to serve them. And that's how I knew I had to step back from that role, dude. Like, cause like my, my mind was like thinking in a different way. So I needed somebody to have that. Like I had to, I had to be right. Like the guests couldn't be right on that. And again, that's where you have that hospitality side where it's just like being right is irrelevant, dude. Like it doesn't even matter at the end of the day, like truthfully. Did you see my post the other day where I was talking about that? Where like how we're, we're all not put on this planet to prove how right we are. I don't know, something like our mission in life is to make a positive difference, not to prove how smart or how prove how right we are. Something along those lines. It says something like we're not here to on earth to prove how smart we are. We're not here on earth to prove how right we are. I don't remember the exact words. I'll look it up later. But I thought it was so so awesome and, and so like to the point because it's like we all always want to prove that we're right, dude. It's like for what? Who are you proving it to? You got to prove it to yourself. And in hospitality, you can't be the one that's right because it's the customer who's right. No matter what the issue is, whether they're at fault or not, they're they're right. They're the ones that are right. Yeah. And not only that, not only that but Airbnb will side with uh, the, the guests the nine out of 10 times. <laughs> For sure. I, I found ways to fight that now, too, because I've gone through so many ringers with them. But yeah, you're 100 percent correct. Anyway, so this was a good episode. I mean, I don't know. You want to continue down the hospitality route or should we go back to the quarter one and uh, where we're at and how we're seeing a difference? Because we just spent about 30 minutes on hospitality, which I thought was great. You know what, man? Um, I think this is, I think we should stick on this hospitality stuff. I think it's, you know, I, I think it's good to bring people back to basics and, and yeah. including myself, including you and everybody else in this space to like, again, I, I don't want to keep, uh, you know, we're not reinventing anything. Like this is what it's been for the longest time. Like Rafa, what's your favorite restaurant that you go to in Santa Ana? There's a few actually. I go to Benchmark right. is one of my favorites. Lincoln Owl, the one that, the whiskey ass spot that you said is one of my favorites, but that's more of like a bar area. So when you go there, like what's what do you get when you come when you go there? Is it the service? Is it the drinks? Like what is it that makes it good? The like vibe. what's your the vibe? The vibe. All right, yeah. cool. The food's that's awesome, but the vibe, it's the vibe for sure. Got you. Yeah. So in that's in that same concept, like you're thinking about what I love about that restaurant, like same concept with your with your business dude like what do you love about your units like you have cool those lofts are freaking cool though man like I, I i would never have thought that the lofts wouldn't have been doing as good but you just brought up a lot of good points but you also brought up that there's a i mean who knows how many new airbnbs there are actually you know what? i'm gonna look it up right now how many new airbnbs there are i mean dude, there's a ton dude you know that you look listen you know what i'm talking about was strictly in terms of the the growth and the way the population's going it's a real thing right yeah even even what you said are all awesome valid points they are 100 percent, and everybody should be applying them but it still comes down to the end game at the end of the day also is how much value you're providing for the money that you're putting into it a lot of people a lot of people opened a lot of units in the market and a lot of people had to lower their prices to to keep up with demand in the market and when that happens 
everybody else has to compete with the prices. And, you know, at the end of the day, yeah, your hospitality is going to be awesome. But unless you're really standing out like luxurious wise, it doesn't yeah. matter what you're providing in the unit in terms of amenities and services, because a lot of people for the type of product you're providing only want a certain price. And when you all you're doing is providing a one bedroom apartment, everybody around you is going to provide a one bedroom apartment at a lower cost. Right. People stay with me because my places stand out above everybody else. Yeah. Right. So the people that are struggling and hurting and look, I'm only talking about eight, 12 of my units. Right. I have 52. Yeah. So and uh, in this market, I mean, in, in Southern California. And so when people start trying to compete and fight for the best nightly rate, that's when it all starts going downhill, because now everybody's trying to match that to get that booking not understanding that it's not about the rate. It's about the hospitality that you're providing in this industry, right? You lower the rates, you get really bad people. We just had some really shitty guests last night. We trashed our place, right? Yeah. So we no longer price at that. So now we got to stick to our price and provide the service for that price. Simple as that. How many, did you, what did you find? Did you find how many there? Yeah, I was just, I was just looking it up right now. Okay. So as I'm looking this up, let's, let's kind of, we've been talking for about 40, 40 something minutes already. I want to wrap this up so people don't get, don't get too, get started. Yeah, we're going to end it right this. here. This is a good topic. What's your what's your takeaways like after this conversation right now? What do you feel like you're going to implement in your business? And what do you feel like other people should like reevaluate right now? Well, you know, one of the biggest thing is figure out how we can provide a better service without having to spend too much money. That's the that's the biggest thing. So all the points that you made in hospitality were great and finding a way to implement them at scale. So maybe I'll start with a couple of units and then see how I can start adding them to more and more and more as I train my people to do to do it at a larger at a larger scale, but everybody who's out here who's got one or two units that 100% implement everything we just talked about, 100%, right? Yeah. Don't be scared at the price. Stick to your guns, offer your rates, provide the customer service for what your value is rather than being scared and having to drop rates just because everybody around you is dropping rates. That's that's not going to get any anybody anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, t I totally agree. I totally agree with that. Yeah. And it's just time to like, you know, slow season is the time to reinvent what you're doing. Are you getting bookings at like for the summer at all and in your units in Santa Ana or no? Oh, all day long. Summer's the best month. I'm dude. Okay. I mean, we're going to crush. I'm, I already know, like we're already getting mad bookings, but uh, I'm talking about getting past the slow seasons. Slow right? seasons, Most yeah. people got through the slow season right now. Yeah. That's what we've been talking about. The beginning of the year is the slow season for us. Yeah. Most people couldn't get through the slow season. That's why they're shutting down because they didn't have reserves or didn't have the, the capacity to be able to hold through. But once summer yeah. comes, yeah, we should absolutely crash. Now, if we don't, that's a different story, but 100%. Yeah. What was your big break in this uh, conversation then, Rafa? That Jesse's getting really good at hospitality, and I'm <laughs> going to follow what you're saying. No. You know what? You guys, um, check out a book, Unreasonable Hospitality, if you haven't already. Uh, Rafa, order that book, dude. I, I read it a long time ago. I don't remember any of it. <laughs> Go back to it, dude. And uh, also check out Bill Marriott's book, Willingness to Serve. Like, yeah, that's, that's a good one. I'm, I haven't heard of that one. That's a good, yeah, check that one out too. That one's a uh, a really, really good book that goes back to, again, like your hospitality business. But yeah, man, today was insightful. I think that there's a lot of people that are run through slow season and midterm rentals are a good way to pivot out of that too, just FYI. Like you might not get the six grand that you normally get during the summer. You might get 4,500, but that's going to roll you through, you know, a slower period of, of time or of, of the slow season. So it's always something to think about. You know, you're getting that consistent cash flow coming in. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm glad that we, were, we covered this today and, and it, it makes a lot of sense. I think it's timely too. Yeah, this was good. It was like a mini mastermind between us. I appreciated it. Yeah, bro. Hopefully you guys all enjoy this, guys. Obviously follow Jesse, follow me on Instagram. You guys know the, the, the spiel, all the links below. We love you all. Yeah, not only that, but you guys like and share this with people that potentially need to up their game in the uh, short-term or mid-term rental space. Let them know, you know, that you know, there's possibilities to make your listings better and to really be intuitive about it. And yeah, that's all we ask, Rafa. We don't ask for much, do we? Just a rating, five-star rating. We ask for five-star ratings. We ask that you guys uh, send us $10 every episode. We ask that you guys, uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. All we want is for you guys to enjoy the show, honestly. So yeah, that's why take we, do action. we get great positive feedback. I mean, we get really good feedback from you guys, so... You know, it's yeah. what keeps us going. Yeah, man. Appreciate it, dude. All right, Rafa. See you, buddy. All right, later, dude. Bye, everybody.